Right, hello and welcome. So recently I bought some equipment to try to get onto the Oscar 100, the Q0100 satellite. And this is this fixed ham radio satellite that amateur radio people can use to contact you know people around um, most of the world on. Now I I went ahead and bought a number of pieces of equipment and since since trying that out a couple of times there's been some really important lessons that i've learned and i thought i'd share three of the key lessons that i've learned while trying to get it into the q100 satellite and this is a, a satellite that's in a fixed orbit so it never changes and it's got a transponder on there that allows people to um, beam into the satellite on 2.4 gigahertz and at the same time that signal was beamed back out at 10 gigahertz and this allows through this transponder people who, who are in that footprint of the satellite to be able to communicate with each other whether that's voice data all sorts of uh, even even TV all sorts of things so I've been interested in this for a while and I've been watching how people are setting their equipment up and it's it, it is quite complex and there's a lot of movable lots of different parts that will need to be put together i decided uh, i'm going to see if there's a way of actually having all of that built into one box so i'm just buying one simple box and i just need to plug in some wires plug in a dish happy days so I came across the DX Patrol ground station. The DX Patrol um, ground station, in theory, allows you to uh, plug in a normal 70 centimeters radio and plug it into a dish, uh, plug it you know, by the LMB and all those different bits onto the dish and pretty much up and running to use Q100. But it's three things that I've discovered since then that are, you know, can be overcome and I'm working towards overcoming them uh, however um, I just thought I'd raise them so that if you're in a similar boat where you go want to get into this into this satellite I don't want to be building all these different bits and bobs up because time and motivation uh, so the DX100 itself it's a fantastic piece of kit <clears throat> however uh, when you are operating qr 100 and i i learned this after i bought the 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 um, ground station by the way you need to be able to operate in duplex mode because you are transmitting into a transponder that then beams that signal back out again but if you're hitting that transponder with too strong a signal then you're at risk of bleeding over lots of different other frequencies but also you're at risk of overloading the front end on the transponder which is on a satellite up in orbit and it's not good so you do need to be able to monitor your signal going into the transponder hence you need to be in duplex mode now the DX ground station does not do duplex it's a simplex because some of the circuitry on that on that in that box is shared between the transmission and receive. So with the DX ground station, you either have to have a separate setup for receive, which pretty much um, puts a lot a half of the system you got inside that box to waste, or you can use the Goon Hilly Web SDR that actually gives you a real time monitoring of the satellite. Which is okay, great. So at home, if you can get in the satellite, then you could probably monitor it through a computer. But like me, I wanted to actually use a Q100 portable because my my reception at home isn't the best. I'll show you that in a few minutes. I'll show you the 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 setup in a few minutes here. So the big lesson is if you are going to buy the DX ground station you need to think about and what conditions you're going to be using that in and are you going to be able to replicate a duplex mode okay it's the first lesson 
The second lesson is when I bought two 70 ohm patch cables with F-type connectors to plug between the ground station and the LMB. I went on two um, RS components in the UK and bought two um, satellite cables and they're absolutely useless. Um, I First of all, they wouldn't screw in properly into the back of the ground, uh, ground station. I had to cut off some of the connectors to get some of the connectors to work. Now, since then, I've bought, I've replaced them with two seemingly better constructed um, patch leads. However, the way that I'm going to be going with this is I'm going to be actually buying some 75 ohm cable some of the best I can get that's got enough, enough flex in it because real important when you attach this to the LMB the LMB can be pulled with the weight of the wire so the wire needs to be bend it, you know, flexible enough but as low loss as I can get I'm going to get some of my own F type connectors and put them on myself so buying patch leads for a satellite work like this I, I think the most that I've seen don't seem to be a very good quality at all so making your own patch leads I would say is really important and the third the third lesson that I've learned is I've, I bought a 60 centimeter dish because I wanted something to fit into the vehicle it's easy to put up put down and and store however the 60 centimeter dish um it doesn't seem to be big enough i've had one or two people i'll read through some of the comments in a minute but um it does seem that the 60 centimeter dish isn't going to be big enough to run the system on so i'm j i've got it set up now at home we'll see what we can hear on it i'm going to try and do a transmission as well today We'll set this on. Four three hundred. Um, I can I can point my dish between the two buildings opposite me and get a a signal in. It's not perfect. Um, even just moving the dish just a, a fraction up or down is uh, a bit of a challenge right So I'm now going to, I'm going to attach this onto this is the transmit part of the the satellite antenna this is a helical hear that little springy bit in there it's a helical wound uh, transmit antenna with an end type on it and that just sits on top of the LMB a little bit precarious um, and then I'll be able to transmit on that but first before I do that I'm just going to read through some of the pieces of advice that you sent through to me uh, which includes this as well okay so uh, thank you to everybody that that has commented on all the videos especially on this video because it helps me to learn uh, and learn quite quickly um, I mean Q Sky events that's a lot of money to spend uh, uh, on a ground station that doesn't do duplex and yeah it's a fair point if if like me you wanted to do portable more than anything um, not not thinking about that no not knowing that and just going out and buying the equipment uh, is a bit of a, a learning curve to say the least however it's it's to be overcome 
Somebody said it should have gone for the ice cream cone from Nell Engineering for the Q, Q, Q0100. I need to look that up. So this is the ice cream cone from Nell Engineering. Rasputin Putin uh, said the dish is too small, thus the, thus the gain is low. Yeah, I probably need to go for 80 centimetre, maybe a metre dish. But then I need to store it and I need to transport it. Ideally what I'm looking for, if you can get a dish that is a mesh dish that can be sort of folded up, that would be ideal because then I could transport it and store it. And they're, they're my main concerns really at the moment is actually, because I've got so much equipment, or the wife calls it crap, I've got so much crap, uh, I've started to get a an antenna graveyard again where all the antennas go to die. Uh, and I need to reduce the amount of um, scrappage that's there so I do need to be careful of, of just buying more stuff <laughs> um, Steve y Yemek uh, love this good work fella I used to swing a few dishes in um, I got very creative with my vocabulary <laughs> that's funny K1ZEK that's very interesting I can't wait to build my own station well I'm hoping by actually putting this video together it's a, it's a beginner's beginner's video, it's an amateur's amateur's video and the mistakes that I make are um, easily avoided through reading, watching and not rushing. Yeah, so DX Scotland also mentions that when you're trying to tune it, when you're trying to point the dish at Q100, the actual a millimetre here and there is the difference between losing half your signal or not. It's very, very um, accurate the way that you have to point the dish. Now, um, working portable, I need to be really mindful of that. If the wind blows against the dish and moves it, then I'm losing my signal. I need to be able to actually make sure that it is fastened firmly in windy conditions. Uh, this is from the Ham Radio Junkie. Um, you may wish to add a left hand skew to the LMB. Rotate the LMB clockwise to see an increase in signal. Clockwise. Um, if you have difficulty finding the sweet spot, turn the rotate, turn the rotate the LMB anti-clockwise until you hear a null or a dip in RX signal and then rotate the LMB 90 degrees clockwise and it should be fairly close, if not spot on. So thank you, Keith. That, that's actually really good advice. I'm gonna plug this in and I might even just try and tweak the, the, the satellite dish to see if we can increase the signal or not anyway to get the optimal um, position. And then I'm gonna get Goo and Hilly on this computer and then see if I can hear myself back on the satellite from this really scratchy location so i am getting a signal into the, the satellite uh, cqsat cqsat this is mike zero sierra zulu tango mike zero sierra zulu tango cqsat the signal is there it is very weak i'm hoping that a move into a a better position better place to operate the radio improving reducing some of the signal loss between a uh, ground station and the dish and then and then also a, a bigger dish as well should should improve things i'm just gonna have a tweak i'm just gonna tweak a little bit more and see if i can improve the the signal. Tango, Cuban Whiskey 8, Tokyo, Italy X ray. Now off and clear. Very good morning, Carl. Thank you for your good luck. Yeah, thank you very much there, Gerald. Thank you for being my first contact. It's lovely chatting to you on the through the satellite. I wish you a very good Sunday and hope to uh, catch you again soon. So Golf Whiskey 8. Tango Italy X-ray from Mike Zero Sierra Zulu Tango 73 Gerald bye bye. Good luck, Carl. Take care. 73. Enjoy your Sunday. <laughs> um, this is Mike Zero Sierra Zulu Tango QRZ. 
just in case. Sugar 5 to Mike Echo Slovenia, 52 Mike Echo Mike, 0 question mark. Yeah, Sugar 52 Mike Echo Mike, this is Mike 0 Sierra Zulu Tango, Mike 0 Sierra Zulu Tango, QSL. Yeah, Roger, Roger, yes, that's correct. Um, the name here is Carl, Charlie, Alpha, Romeo, Lima. Um, you are 5555 into Italy, Oscar, 82, IO, 82, QSL. Uh, okay, I have no uh, uh, Well, fancy that. I ended up having a bit of a pile-up on the, on the satellite. Uh, so I, it is working, I'm getting a signal in. Uh, I've noticed that when I tune the radio in on an exact frequency, the what I'm receiving and what the Q, the Goon Hill is receiving is slightly out, out of frequency. So there is some level of drift here. I need to work out um, how that is so. Um, however, um, yeah, a, a bunch of contacts on the first time I transmitted into the into the satellite. That makes me happy. So lots to learn, um, lots of improvements to make. Uh, I do hope to get out of this setup uh, in the coming months, uh, especially during the winter as well. Um, the good news is uh, on the, the farm that I normally tip my radio equipment up and, and operate from the farm, I've now got Wi-Fi fitted into the, into the barn bit of it. So I, I have now got internet access. Um, I was given permission from my friend who owns the farm to get the Wi-Fi working in um, in the in in the big barn. So that's now working. So that means I can actually operate this setup from there using the web SDR as a as a um, a monitor for that. Fantastic. Well, I hope you've if you've enjoyed the video. I hope for those of you who are interested in this satellite malarkey have learned from my early mistakes and I look forward to the next video so bye bye for now